We're foreigners in this world. Right. We were adopted into the family of God. And that's the family of Abraham, too. And we were grafted into that family. So now we are foreigners. The Bible calls us foreigners, strangers, and aliens in this whole world. Right. We don't belong here. And you'll never feel comfortable here. Yeah. And nobody will like you that is comfortable here. So I want to see what we got to. I don't know about you. I've had trial. I've had tribulation. I've had all that. I've had all the problems. Well, most of us could have threw our hands a long time ago. So that's even queen. I'm giving up. It ain't you. It ain't worth it. But I got news for you. Uh, you ain't dead yet. Right, right. And this ain't the end. Amen. Right. You got something coming. All right. Stop. Look at it. Hebrews chapter twelve. Wherefore, seeing we are also, we also are compassed about. With so great a cloud of witnesses, that's those in heaven, their testimony looking down over us. Let us lay aside every way and the sin which so doth easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Let's consider that. Let's consider that. Let's look at that. I mean, these other people don't know a thing about that. I didn't know anything about it before 1978. But now I look up to heaven and I said, there's a big cloud of witnesses up there, and they've gone already. They came through this mess that I'm coming through, and God took them up to heaven. Now they're in heaven. They're looking down and they're shouting. Keep pressing on the upward way. Amen. Your heart you're gaining every day. I don't have to quit. I don't have to give up. If the whole world turns against us, this is the victory that we come to the world. I'm a winner. I'm going to heaven. Not because of what I've done or what I am, but because of what he did. Amen. Look at verse 2. Look at Jesus. The awful. And finish of our faith. I didn't start this thing. I didn't make it up. He did. He started and he'll finish it. Until then, I'm going to trust him. Now let's see. I get to go to heaven one day. So let's see. Philippians 3.20. I want to encourage you just a little bit. Again, Philippians 3.20. I ain't got no signs to carry. I got no chance to chant. I've just got Jesus in this hey, world. Man. That's all I got. By the way, it's been good enough for uh, two thousand oh, over two thousand years. And I, hey, matter of fact, if you go back to the beginning of the book, it's been good for six thousand years. And thank God, it's still there. He said, in Philippians three twenty. Uh, if you look at that with me, mark this in your Bible, okay? He's in verse uh, thirteen through nineteen. He's talking about. The high calling of God. The calling that God has put on our life. And how that's high above every other calling. Then he comes down in verse 20. He says, for our conversation is in heaven. Now, in the Old English, conversation uh, meant everything. It doesn't just mean your speech. It means your walk. It means your testimony. Right. For our conversation is in heaven. From whence also we also look for the Savior. The Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. There's none, Amen. none other name given unto heaven whereby I mean blessed. Right. We say, there's no other say. Allah, Buddha, <laughs> all, uh, 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 even Mary or whatever you worship. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Right. No right. 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 So I'm looking to him to say, man. Yes, Lord. I'm an American. I'm not ashamed to be an American. I, I do say the Pledge of Allegiance. America's done a lot for me. Amen. And I thank God, God let me be born here. And I yes. think it's the greatest gospel sending nation there's ever been thank on the planet you. Earth. I think more people have been saved and went to heaven because of America, because we've sent out more missionaries and preachers and yes. evangelists than, than even came out of Jerusalem. Yes. But I'm not looking for America to save me. No. I'm not looking for a president to save me. No. I'm looking unto Jesus. All Amen. 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 And, and as long as America let me do that, 
then I'll vote. Right. If they quit letting me do that, I'll quit vote and I'll just say, come to the Lord Jesus and get it all. Amen. But my conversation is in heaven. For whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus, who shall change our vile body that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. Now, Jesus is one that started, he's the one that will end it. Amen. One day the trumpet's going to sound, the dead in Christ will rise first, and then we which are alive remain to be called up together with them in the air, and so shall we ever be Amen. with the Lord and he said, comfort one another with these words. That's what they make them. Yes. Amen. 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 And a lot of rich people ain't got no comfort. Right. Amen. Right. A lot of people live in any old way they want to, but they got no comfort. Right. Jesus is who gives me my comfort. Amen. Now, uh, so, uh, what are you talking about, preacher? I'm saying with all the suffering, all the turmoil, all the confusion, uh, uh, maybe we just might want to look for a little encouragement in the Word of God. That's where I get it. Yes. Amen. Amen. So I've got something to look forward to. I'm looking forward to a Savior coming back from heaven and the trumpet sounding and this old vile body. If you don't think your body's vile, wait till you get the rhinovirus. This old vile body. It's going to be changed in the moment, in the twinkling of eye. Yeah, he's going to give me a glorified body Thank just like Lord. his. He'll yes. never die again. Not a spook, not a ghost, but a body. Right. And, and I'm going to live long as God lives. Now, boy, if that don't encourage you, maybe you just don't know me. That's what I'm looking for. And I hope we can get this stuff straight now. I have my doubts. I, I, I think once the nation's gone, it's gone. But God can do anything. Oh, that's right. I think once the church is gone, it's gone. But God can do anything. Oh, yes. you know? uh, but I'm not looking at that. I'm looking to Him. Yes. I'm looking to Him to come back and deliver me. What that old song, This Old World's Not My Home? I can pass it through. Ed sings about a wandering pilgrim. He's just a pilgrim going through this old world. Don't put your roots down too deep. They'll get rotten. Amen. Amen. Hey, grow them shallow so he can pluck you up real quick. Amen. Amen. I don't want to be like an oak tree when it comes going to heaven. I'm going to be like one of them blades of crabgrass. You just pull it up real quick. And thank God, though, he's coming. You believe he's coming? Yes. yes. Well, what are we moping about? First Peter chapter one verse four. I think this will encourage you. First Peter chapter one verse four. <coughs> Excuse me. I'll go ahead and read verse three while you're turning there. He said, "Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to His abundant mercy hath begotten us. That means we're born, begotten us again unto a lively hope." My hope to lie yes. by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's, that's where my hope is. Amen. To an inheritance. An inheritance is something that somebody leaves you. Right. Some of y'all, I hope you leave me in your will. Some of y'all have been stashed up that old money all these years. And you got it. Some of them probably got in a mattress somewhere. I'm just kidding. I know. Y'all ain't got no money. You wouldn't leave me. Uh, listen, to an inheritance incorruptible, that means you can't mess it up, you can't dirty it, you can't taint it. Hey, and undefiled, no sin can touch it. Undefiled. And that faith is not away. That means it's going to stay just as good from the beginning to the end, and it's never going to end. Uh, reserved for you in heaven. I have an inheritance. Thank you, Lord. I grew up poor, can't nobody in this room out poor me. Daddy, brother Daddy saw you, he can out poor me. I tell poor stuff, and y'all just feel sorry for me, you know, how I grew up poor and all this. But then Danny stands up and he ruins it all because he gets so much poor. He'll have to cry on his own. Oh, Danny. Oh, Danny. But I'm going to tell you something. Some of us grew up the hard way. Thank you, Lord. Came up the hard side. Amen. Thank you, Lord. But thank God we see it helped us. It didn't hurt us. Right. It helped yeah. us. But didn't nobody leave us nothing? That's right. My mom worked in the cotton mill. 
I didn't have a daddy. My mom worked in the pot mill. We rented a house for ten dollars a week. We got ten dollars a week worth of groceries. We didn't have no money. We hey, we grew up hard and poor. People called us white trash. That's what they called that old white trash. But I got news for you. I ain't gonna be old trash much longer. One day something's gonna sound. I'm gonna get my inheritance. I'm gonna Hey, I'm going to end up in glory. Yeah. I'm going to walk on streets of gold. Hey, the gate at my new house is going to be better than the White House. That's right. 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 Really, it's called inheritance tax. Money that's already taxed. And they saved it for you. Now you're going to get it, then they're going to tax you for what they already paid. So that's the political thing. But I don't know anybody here who's got that kind of inheritance, do you? No, sir. Or you might get an insurance policy. You know, I sold life insurance for you. You might get $10,000 inheritance. But by the time it costs $10,000, just buy the cash and put you in. By the time you buy the plot, that's why so many of you get pre made. That's right. By the time, by the way, they still charge you $600 if you take them ashes and bury them on that. Did you know that? That's right. No, the ashes, they charge you 600 just to open it. That ain't counting the plot and stuff. Yeah. It costs too much to die, man. Yeah. We can't afford to die. That's right, right. <laughs> Okay. Did nobody leave? You know, man, they might have left a little insurance policy. I sold a bunch of ten thousand, twenty thousand policies, so that's what it takes to marry you know. But by the time the funeral home gets through with you, the bomber gets through with you, or the mortuary, uh, the burner, the burner, that man is the devil's brother, <laughs> likes to burn people. And uh, by the time they get through with you, and that casket and all that stuff, uh, uh, but you're not gonna have much. Thank God, one day I'm going to get to heaven. <coughs> and I take, I'm in his will. Amen. Put me Amen. in his will. Amen. Hey, Amen. I'm going to inherit everything that God's got. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. I, hey, it's all mine. It's all yours if you know it. Amen. We'll be, hey, this world can't measure that. Nope. Uh, hallelujah. And here's the good thing we ain't got to do anything to get it. And we got to do anything to keep it. Praise God. He gave us it. He put us in his will the day that we accepted Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. The Bible says he adopted us. Now, in his will. Matter of fact, Jesus called us his brethren. His brother. Hey, so, me and my big brother Jesus he got it all. Amen. Amen. You go ahead and riot and burn and destroy and tax and then tax again and tax again. And then at the end, take every bit that's left away from us. But I got news for you. I've got an inheritance in heaven that's incorruptible and undefiled. And nobody can take it. Nobody can change it. Amen. 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 Oh, you got poor, poor Christians. Okay. Hey, we might be poor here, but this ain't our end. Right. Everything you got is going to burn up. What's wrong with me? Ours is going to stay. Yes. Right. Oh, well, I hope you're good enough to keep it. That ain't nothing to it's, uh, uh, it's, it's a gift of God. Not of words, lest any man should boast, he said in Ephesians chapter 2. God gives us an inheritance, and it's called heaven. Yes. And so, how much that cost? If, hey, the cost was in man. That's right. It calls God his one and only begotten. It calls Jesus Christ his blood. You cannot put a price on that. But thank God I don't have to have a price. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. See, it is at the crimson stain. He was his wife. You said, yeah, preacher, if you can keep it. I ain't like this world. I don't have to fight over the word to keep it. It's a gift. It's a gift. And he said, now to him in Jude 22, he said, now to him that's able to keep you and present you faultless. 
before his presence with exceeding joy. That's his job. Is that I got saved? No, you know, I didn't deserve to be saved. He said, if I'd ask him, he'd say, that's called grace. Thank you, Lord. And now I know I still don't deserve to go to heaven. Yes, yeah. If I got what I deserve to go to heaven, I'd go to heaven. Yes, yeah. Oh, you're a pretty good guy. Well, thank God we're not what we used to be. Right. He saved us. He changed us. We're not what we used to be. But we ain't always what we ought to be. Right, right, right. Right. Help us, Lord. But thank God that doesn't determine, determine my inheritance. Right. Right. You know, if a lawyer calls you and said, listen, you had this rich uncle. Oh, y'all got that one, don't you? <laughs> you got this rich uncle. Or this rich aunt. Okay, this rich aunt. I know you got that. <laughs> you got this rich aunt. She lived over here on Coffin Street. <laughs> she put all her money in her pillowcases and in her mattress, and we found it and opened it up, and it's thousands of dollars. And it's all yours. It's got one condition. I said, well, wait a minute. If there's a condition, then it ain't mine. Amen. Amen. But I've got an inheritance in heaven that there's no condition. Right. Amen. 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 It's, it's done. It's paid for. And by the way, he's building it up right now. He said, I've got to provide a place for you. Right. And he's building up my inheritance right now. Amen. Now, poor people like me and you, we know that's good, ain't it? Yeah. And if you're talking about taking it with you, somebody preacher said it one time, I never seen a U Haul. Pulled by a hearse and go down to the cemetery. Well, I preach a lot of funerals. I've never seen that either. Uh, uh, but guess what? Most of us, it wouldn't take a U-Haul. That's right. You put it in one bag. You know, yes, get somebody to carry it down there. We ain't got nothing to haul in the U-Haul. We ain't got that much. We didn't have kin folks like that. But I tell you this I got a God in heaven, and He said, Everything's mine and yours. Amen. Amen. And I give it to you. The day you're saved, I put you in my wheel. And he said, you're in my hand, and my hand's in the Father's hand, and no man can pluck you out. Now, you go down to the lawyer's office, and my inheritance, somebody, for instance, I'll give you a good for instance, we have plenty of time, this is one of the old stories in Amen. <laughs> but my mama passed away. At 99 and 8 months, my mama passed away. And her family, the, the Robinsons in Lancaster, there was a bunch of them, but they were all related. And, uh, her daddy had bought up this bunches, a big section of the cemetery. And when she, she passed away, we were going to plan for Jerry's funeral ahead of time. I'm trying to hurry him up. <laughs> <laughs> we were going to plan for his funeral ahead of time. And, and so I, I went up to the probate office and I said, well, my mama's got this section in the cemetery there in, in Lancaster up town. And it's the oldest cemetery in town. I, I said, her daddy bought all these plots. And I have an aunt, and I have an uncle, and I have my grandmother and grandfather who died about seven or so years before I was ever born. And uh, my mom got another brother. And, and, uh, uh, and then I got my brother, Donnie, you're going to be my mama. And then all back behind that, just these plots. I said, uh, I, I want to pre plan. My nephew's funeral, you know, try to help him ahead of time because it, it, I'm, I'm hoping I'm out living. But I'm not sure. Yeah. So, so I go in there and the lady, she looked it up. She said, uh, well, you can't get those plots. I said, why not? She said, well, the last name that was in was Ruth Robin. And she, she's buried there. And she didn't leave them to anybody. I said, well, how am I supposed to get access to one? She said, well, what you're going to do, you're going to type up a legal document, and you're going to have to mail it to all the relatives of Ruth, Robinson, Roddy, and ask their permission either to put them on your name or to bury somebody. My mother was 99 and 8 months when she died. Her, brother, her sisters, her brother, all them gone. All, all their children are gone because she was the baby of the family. All, the, all my first cousins are gone. All my second cousins are gone. 
I didn't ruin you them anyway. So now I've got to contact third cousins and fourth cousins. Anybody? And she said, yeah. I said, that's impossible. She said, well, nobody will ever get to use those. Unless you can get in touch with all her descendants and get permission to occupy or inherit. We didn't have family unions. We never met most of them. So there's a stipulation on that inheritance. But then when I get to my eternal inheritance, I'm going to go to heaven and I know y'all like to talk about St. Peter being in the gate. But if he was, Peter would say, Well, what? Uh, uh, how do you plan to have access to heaven? I said, Well, I got an inheritance. My mama was a Christian. They said, No, no, God don't have no grandchildren. <laughs> Only got children. Well, you know, I had this uncle. He was a great Christian. No, 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 no. I said, Well, I gave a lot of money to the church. No, 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 no. Oh, I was a preacher. Oh, no, no, no. oh I was a pastor. No. I said, Well, what stipulation? And he'd say, You must be adopted into the family of God to get into God's house. And I said, Well, oh, boy. March the 5th, 1978, Eastside Baptist Church. About uh, uh, 12 something, and the 300 verse of just as I am, and they were singing. And I sit on six, six, six on the left hand side, and the Holy Ghost got hold of me. And I said, If you'll help me, I'll go down there and do whatever I got to do, Lord. I don't want to go to hell. And He helped me, and I went down there and I received Jesus as my personal Savior, not a Savior, not the Savior, but my Savior. And I'm born again that day. And Peter said, Welcome to the family. Amen. That's my inheritance. That's my right. I have the authority to go to heaven. Oh, you're not good enough to go to heaven. That's not a stipulation. Amen. Oh, you don't come from the right breed. That's right. not a stipulation. Thank you, Lord. It's whosoever will that he yeah. yeah. drink the water of life and breathe. And Mark the field, 1978, I drank of that water in 1988. Thank you, Lord. And now I'm a, I have an inheritance. Right. Yes, Lord. I don't care what happens out here. The colleges can cancel me out. Yep. They take me off Facebook. Yes, Lord. <laughs> the courthouse can take my name off the deed to my house. Hey, they can even steal my citizenship of being an American citizen, but they cannot take my inheritance. Hey! Amen. Amen. Oh, you can judge me. You can believe. You can lie. You can do anything you want to about me. But there's nothing you can do to cancel my inheritance. Amen. That's enough to make a Baptist shout. Yes, right it there. is. I got to hurry. I got to hurry. Some of y'all lose for that inheritance of both names. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> first treatment. <laughs> By the way, that's a place that some people are going to get to anyway. Uh, <clears throat> first treatment. I mean, Colossians. Colossians chapter 15. Colossians chapter 15. I'm just talking about some things that we have, okay? Colossians, 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 chapter 1, it is, chapter 1, verse 5. Well, I'm going to go ahead and read 3 while you're turning. We give thanks to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love which you have to all the saints for the hope which is laid up you in heaven, whereof you have heard before the word of truth and of the gospel, which has come to you as it is in all the world, and bring forth fruit as it does also in you since the day you heard it, and knew the grace of God in truth. Did you know I've got a Savior in heaven, I've got an inheritance in heaven, and I've got a hope in heaven. I've got a hope in heaven. That's my hope. Later on, the rapture is called the blessing. The resurrection is called the blessing hope. But my hope of born in heaven, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus Christ. Right. 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 That's my hope. Right. If I die and go to hell, it'll be with that hope. Right. And I can't go to hell to believe in you. Right. Because you might be born again and didn't get the blessing. Right. You can't 
can't just go to church and go to heaven. Your hope's in the church, not in heaven. You can't just get baptized and go to heaven. Then your then your hope is in the baptismal pool. You get baptized till you drink. Still die and go to heaven. My hope's in Jesus Christ. Yes. And that now, since he's seen, he resurrected and he ascended up into heaven, he's sitting on the right hand of the Father interceding for us, then my hope is in him. Yes. My hope's in him. Yes. And listen, I'm, I'm going to say this. I don't want to explain it, but I'm glad Jesus got to the poor religion of Jesus Christ. Exactly. And don't get me wrong, I think you're all to go to church, and I'm glad you're here. I raised my kids in church after I got saved, and they had a drug problem. I drug them to Sunday school. I drug them to preaching on Sunday morning. I drug them back on Sunday night. I drug them in on Wednesday night. I drug them to camp meetings and revivals and camp. And thank God, they, hey, they're living today. That's even my money. But my hope is in none of that. My hope is in Jesus Christ, and He's in heaven, so I got to go to Him. Amen. I love my church. I love the people here. I know I get that. Yeah. Uh, uh, y'all get aggravated at me sometimes and all that. But absence makes the heart grow fun. I'm glad I see it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say that. <laughs> Amen. But, but my hope ain't in you. I know what you made out of. You made out the same thing I did. Yeah. And I don't want you to put your hope in me. I'll let you down. And you'll let me down. And on our very best day, on our best day, we're still just sinners saved by the grace of God. We ain't what we used to be. Thank God. But we ain't what we're going to be. And one day, my hope in Christ is going to take me to heaven. No matter what you think or I think, I put it all in here. If I die and go to hell, it wouldn't have to be. But we can't lie. Right? I put it all on here. Where's your hope today? Where's your hope? My, uh, some of you ladies hope I turn that air conditioner up. And I hope they get a building where I'm not responsible. For that. Because I get, one gets mad at me if I turn it up, and the other gets mad at me if I turn it down. So I can't win for losing. I won't say, uh, uh, hey, the world's going to hell and it's burning right now. It's on fire and everything's going wrong and, and it looks like we've got no hope. But thank God, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I've got, hey, I've got a Savior. I've got an inheritance. I've got a hope in a hopeless world. Hebrews 11, 16. I'm just about through. They put me better than that clock. I'm going to tell you what time. <laughs> Hebrews 11, 16. Hebrews 11, 16. I need to be paid. I don't want to run off this. First time. Hebrews 11, 16. You're already there. Hebrews 11, verse 16. Through faith. <coughs> through faith. Also say herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. Now there's the beginning of the history of Israel. But listen, uh, not only do I have a savior, not only do I have an inheritance, not only do I have a hope, but you know, uh, uh, I've got a promise. I've got a promise just like Savior did. Uh, that promise that uh, he who is faithful promise. Amen. I might promise you something, don't do it. I'm getting old, I forget things. I got notes everywhere. I, I got, you don't want to do that, do you? I got notes. Look at my Bible, I got notes all everywhere. In my office, I got notes, notes, notes on the calendar, and I forget where the calendar is. I ain't got a big desk calendar to put notes on. And I got another calendar over here on the a thing up there. I got one in the hall, and, and I might tell you I'm going to do something, don't do it. Not that I didn't mean to do it. I might have promised you I was going to do it. And all intentions were real. I, I really wanted to, but I just forgot. Yes, Lord. Help us. Or let something else get in the way. Yes, Lord. Help and don't you sit there and tell me you ain't never done that. <laughs> you might not be older than me, but I've been doing this all my life, and so have you. My mom 
to say, well, Ronnie, I thought you was going to. Yes, Lord. No, you didn't. You're just being disobedient. No, I, 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 I'm a good guy. <laughs> Listen, Sailor said, I'm way too old to have a baby. Over 90 years old. How many of you ladies like to have a baby at 90 years old? Oh, thank you. Then we want to sniff a baby. You ever picked up a baby, you know, rotten? Well, usually when me and Danny picks it up, it means that eight pound diaper is full. Right, Danny? Danny said, Danny said, well, he took, took the kids in. He said, he didn't really know how to change the diaper. It's so old for guys to change the diaper. So he just took the little boy out the yard and undid the diaper. They dropped me, turned the water hose on. <laughs> I believe it. I'll tell you what. I have hope in Jesus Christ Amen. and he keeps his promises. Yes, he does. God said, Savior, you're 90 years old, but you have a little baby. Amen. And he told Abraham, he said, man, you're all close to 100. And you'll have a little baby. Yes, Lord. Amen. And they said, whoa. But then they figured if God said it, that settled it. Right. Right. Well, that, man. And that's where my, hey, listen, that's where my hope for heaven is. He promised it. He promised it. He promised it. I don't care what any preacher or so called apostle or prophet or whatever they call themselves nowadays. Come on, preacher. He promised it. Oh, yeah. but you didn't look saved yesterday. It don't matter. He promised it. I want to look saved, but even if I didn't. He promised it. So, ah, you just don't add up to my standard. I don't think so good. I don't care what your standard is. He is with old bloody cross. He promised yes. it. And he's going to keep it. Under him that's able to keep me. And I put it all on him because he promised. Yes. Well, thank God. He, God, don't, God don't take back his promises. Thank you, Lord. I've got a home in heaven because he promised it. Verse 16, but now they desire a better country, that is, in heaven. Wherefore God is not ashamed because to be called their God, for he hath prepared them a city. Thank God. Beautiful land. I'm looking for a city to build Thank you to God. Why? Because he promised it. Yes. Now, I know the world looks bad. And y'all want to talk about prophecy and all this stuff. You know what I found out? I'm 70 years old. I've been preaching since I'm 20 something years old. And I found out a little Bible knowledge of woman, a whole lot of good preaching. And there's all kind of preaching going on today about the end of the world and the second coming and the rapture. And I believe all that. And I believe it to be any day. I hope it happens today. And I hope it happens tonight while well, some people lay out of church on Sunday night. Right? And, uh, 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 but listen, uh, I want it and I look for it. I long for it. But you know what? If it don't come, I'm still happy. Hey. Yeah, yeah but they born in Columbia University. They're uh, rioting in the street. Well, yeah. Yeah, that's just old sinful, wicked, lost, blind people. That's all that is. Oh, it's a sign that Jesus is coming. They've always been around folks. These people didn't just pop up yesterday. They've always been people like this. And they've always done things like this. And I'm not putting all my faith and my hope and all this in the second coming. I already know him. I'm already adopted into the family. I already have a home in heaven. He's going to keep his promise. You said, what did they make against the law to be a Christian? Well, that won't be the first time that ever happened either. That's right. <laughs> but who can be against us if God has spoken? Amen. Yes. Amen. 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 I hope he comes today. Yeah. Really, I hope. They don't matter if you don't hold off till tonight. <laughs> <laughs> what a good day to be Sunday night or Wednesday night. That'd be a real good time. But he's coming. Yes, he and I'm ready. But what is it today or tomorrow or next week or a hundred years from now? We don't know. That's right, that's right. He's promised me some things, and I believe he'll keep it. Amen. Amen. He gave me a Savior. 
He gave me an inheritance. Thank you, he gave Lord. me a hope. Yeah. He gave me a real home in heaven. Yeah. Hey, that'll never fade away. And that's the good news. You, and who would want that? <coughs> Come on, preach. Who would want that? Somebody's been deceived by the old world of flesh. I used right. to be one of them. Yes. And he said, yeah. such were some of you. Yes. 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 We were all there. Yes. But you know what we need to do? We need to put out more packages. That's right. We need to share more gospel. Hey. We need to give away more. Uh, uh, we put them on the gas tank at the gas station. We need hey, going to all the world and preach the gospel to every creature with packets or, or, or words or church or whatever you can do. Get them to come to Christ because see, yeah, maybe it comes today or 100 years from now. They still must be born again right. so they can have an inheritance, so they can have a Savior, so they can have hope, and so that they can have a home. Yes. That's why God left us here. Yes, Lord. Right. To tell people this. That's right. All right. Yes. He said, don't hide under the bush. No. Hold up on a man. Hey, man. You remember, most of us are old people, okay? Some of y'all ain't, but you hang around with us, so you can find it hard. <laughs> so, so, growing up, I remember people that, they talked about going to church. Amen. They talked about trying to live right. They talked about trying to live for the Lord. They pointed their finger at me and tell me I was going to hell. Yeah. Some of them told me too, God. <laughs> but at least they were talking about it yeah. and the world the day that we live in the churches people run the church and they sing and they dance this one yeah i'm too old to do that <laughs> and boy they just sway and the lights flash and the smoke rolls kind of like those nightclubs we used to go to right. and uh, uh boy they's having a good time and they go out here and people have no hope they have no savior they have no home in heaven and they never open their stinky mouth about it <coughs> there ain't no problem with the world. The world's doing exactly what they've always done. Right. The problem is with people who claim they believers in local churches who no longer have a burden for those people that have right. no savior right. and they have no hope and have no inheritance and they have no home in heaven. And we, <coughs> as Christians have lost their compassion. Right. He said that we're to rescue them. Jude 23 <laughs> said, have compassion on yes, the Lord. Making a difference. Yeah. Amen. Pulling them out of the fires. <laughs> and hating the garments that are spotted by the flesh. We got, Jesus said, the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. Well, I'm the church. You're the church. This ain't the church. Right. <laughs> the devil ain't worried about this building. He don't care right. about bricks. He cares. He worries about yes, us. Right. Going yeah. out there and say, let's go to hell. Please don't go to heaven. Yeah, I'm gonna hang this up here so somebody will get the gospel. I'm gonna put this on somebody's mailbox. I'm gonna hand it to them in the grocery store. I'm gonna put it in their buggy so whenever they go get groceries, they're looking right there at the gospel. Hey, I'm gonna put it everywhere I go. I'm gonna talk about it everywhere I go. And that's what he's talking about. Those of us who have all of these things. Are we gonna sit back and just let the world burn? Have mercy. I have a message. From the Lord, hallelujah. A message from the Lord, I sing. Well, let's do it. If you're not saved, hey, forgive us. We'll be better at this. Yes. The world would be fine if people might be saved. I'm glad somebody had compassion on me. I'm glad somebody witnessed yes. me when I didn't even want to be witnessed. That's right. I'm glad somebody told me when I didn't want to hear it. <laughs> I'm glad they kept on and they kept on and they kept on until finally I received it. Yes. And we thank God that great cloud witness is up there right now saying, yes. preach it, Brother Vaughn. Preach it yes. just like we preached it to you. You preach it to others yes. and tell you the same thing. Yes. yes. Let's stand, Father. I didn't preach this morning. I didn't want to tell you you preach last week. <coughs> But it's all true. Lord, Lord, we've got the only real hope. Believers in Christ. Yes. We've got the only real hope. 
All this stuff's temporary. The Bible says it's going to melt with a fervent heat. And the heavens are going to be rolled back like a scroll. And thank God I've got my name up there. Lord, there's one here today that doesn't know you as their personal Savior, not a Savior, not the Savior, <coughs> but their own Savior. If they've never come to you and say, God, I'm a sinner, and I know I want to go to hell, but I broke God's law, but I don't want to go. And I believe Jesus died in my place. I believe he died for my sins, and he rose from the dead to prove that God had accepted the sacrifice. And God, I want that forgiveness. I want that Savior. If you're in here today and you don't know him, that's what you want to pray. Don't say, Lord, I'm going to quit this. I'm going to quit that. I'm going to get better. I'm going to join the church. No, you need a Savior before you need to quit anything. He'll do the quitting if you'll do the calling. Whosoever's called upon the name Lord shall be saved. And then maybe you're saved today. You never care about a gospel track. You never invited people to church. You never even shared your own testimony about your own inheritance, your own adoption. I pray the Lord can meet you and give you holy boldness to open your mouth over here at Bojangles today or at least have a gospel track. At least put something in somebody's mailbox. At least hang something on the gas pump. At least love your family enough to tell me. And then there's some Christians in here today, you've been doing the best you can do, and you've been doing real good at it, and God's been blessing for you. I pray you don't quit. I pray you don't give up, don't back up, don't apologize, just keep pressing on. We'll get our reward in heaven. That's where we're going to get it. Apostle Paul said you sent a, a, a Satan to buffet him. He's going to buffet us while we're here, Lord, but one day we'll get to heaven and we'll cross the finish line and all that will be over. Bless these folks for being faithful. In Jesus' name. Altars open if you need it. You want to be saved, I'll meet you down here. If you just, the Lord spoke to you about something else, you just need to come to the altar and do business with the Lord. You come on. <laughs> come on. Maybe you need to join the church. Maybe you need to get baptized. Come on. Come on. I'll pray with you. Come on. If you're a lady, I'll get my wife to pray with you. Come on. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest friend, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. You got hope? When darkness fills you got his inheritance. I rest on his unchanging grace. When every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds it in the way. Are you ashamed of Christ? On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. His own discovery is what support me in the whelming flood. All around my soul is playing. He did his all my love and say. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. One more verse. All other ground is sinking sand. One last verse. When we shall come with a trumpet sound, oh, may I live in him be found. Amen. Rest in his righteousness alone, all this to stand before the throne. On Christ the Son.